So you want to create a simulation in Blender and export it with source ops to source engine. Sure, let's do that. So I take a cube, I go to preferences, add-ons and enable cell fracture. Then I use cell fracture and I make sure to up the noise to 100%, set the recursion to one. And I might need to lower the source limit, but I'll find out. Uh, in a second, so I'll do this. Okay, that's not as many pieces as I'd like, so let's do that again. This time, actually, I want to split big pieces, not small pieces. And I'll increase the recursion and maybe lower the source limit. So how does that look? Better. How many pieces do we have? 40-something. So, um... Let's do that, then... Maybe another one of these, maybe less of that. Ooh, and some margins definitely wouldn't hurt. So by default, there are already some margins. Hmm. Okay, well then I won't mess with it. Um, <clears throat> and this is too many pieces, 129. That will not work in Source Engine. 128 is the max. So I'll lower the source limit a bit more and maybe here as well i don't know what what this i don't know exactly what it means but sure whatever 63 sure this is fine okay so we've got a bunch of pieces some of which may be smaller than desirable uh, i'm going to delete the cube that i made it out of and i'm going to take all my pieces and move them up like this much, no, maybe one more. I'm also going to, I'm going to call this active. I'm going to call this simulation. I'm gonna move active into simulation. I'm move this guy into simulation above here and call it passive. And into passive, I will add a plane, which I'll scale 10 times. And um, passive, rigid body, add passive, boom. So now, this guy um, in the physics tab has a passive rigid body set to convex hole. I'll up the friction a bit and uh, that's probably fine. So then the rest of these I want to make active. So active uh, rigid body add active, there we go. Um, increase the mass because this is quite a big thing. I'm just going to make all the pieces 10 kilograms, whatever, it's fine. I would leave this on convex hull because if you set it to mesh, it gets really buggy. And the interesting thing is all of the bodies created by cell fracture are already convex hulls anyway. Like they're already perfectly, so it, you know, it should be fine. Uh, so leave this as is, up the friction a little, I think. And then I'm going to do copy from active. So that all the, because I was only editing this active one, but I want to also have the selected ones, the same settings. So there they have it. And give me a timeline over here or a dope sheet. No, I'd rather have a timeline because then I can set the frames. Let's lower that a bit. Um, I'm going to save this file so that, you know, I don't lose my progress. And there's a physics simulation. Sure, whatever, that's fine. Uh, let's... Actually, I'm gonna play this back and then I'm gonna see if they're lying sort of perfectly on the floor or if there's margin. Eh, there's like a little bit, but it's fine. So I'm not gonna like offset this plane because it's not necessary. So um, I'm going to disable the passive collection because I don't need to see this plane. It will still do its job even if the collection it's in is disabled. Now, um, I would recommend starting at frame zero. If you want exactly 120 frames, then ending at 119, I guess, because source starts at zero, so it's, it's just easier to, to work with. <sighs> Now, this needs to be rigged. 
So I'm going to go to the simulation tab of SourceOps, select the active collection. I'm going to create a new collection, call this uh, export because it's for export and go call this reference because it's the visible meshes. So rig simulation. Okay. It didn't like that. Uh, I, that's a bug. I'll, I need to fix that, but just select an object for a second. Now the context is going to be correct. So there it is. I've got my object with my bones. I can disable active or just simulation entirely. Uh, let's see like this and then like that, get it out of my face. So now I've got these and these will follow, uh, you know, those things perfectly. So now one thing I need to quickly do is this thing actually needs an action. Uh, so I'm just going to do the armature itself because it doesn't matter in this case, I don't actually care about the contents of the action. I just um because the bones are are using constraints child of constraints uh let's see if i can find that there child of the um the object that it's following that's how it works when you with the rig simulation thing let's add a model call it example simulation armature will be um there references reference collision doesn't exist yet i'll worry about that later so sure, I'll just key location and rotation over here and I'll key it over there. And that should be everything I need. I hope, otherwise I will have to bake the uh, animation, which is not difficult. I'll show you how to do it in a second. Uh, but let's add a sequence first, call it full because you know, it's falling. I want the, uh, the armature action frame rate. I'll leave as is custom range. I'm not going to do that. I just want it to go from zero to 119, which is the entire length of the action. That's why I made the action and the timeline match. Uh, and let's export. Oh, it's already done. Okay. Um, so then I go and open it and there it is. Uh, you know, it's in source, it's chilling. It's a bit small because you know, that's how things are. This, this doesn't need to be open right now. Get it out of my face. Um, so I'll make it bigger by going to the model options tab. And actually I'm going to use collision joints, which will make sense in a second. And then I'm going to scale this up just 10 times. Now I'd like to select everything except for the armature, duplicate it, M, new collection, collision, okie dokie. So now I've got a collision collection, which I'm going to put into export. Um, these are literally the same, uh, which by the way, if you want to export this without first baking the, anim the, the action, like baking all the constraints into actual keyframes, you must start at frame zero before you hit export. Otherwise the simulation won't, you know, actually be simulated properly uh, during export. But anyway, so uh, um, right. So I've got all these collision things and the interesting thing is I'm going to take all of them, right? I'm going to give all of them uh, smooth shading. And now the thing is, um, some of them will still have sharp edges because the cell fracture modifier gave them sharp edges. Um, I could go into edit mode and uh, let's see, clear sharp. See if that did the trick. Nope, there's still some sharp edges. And that's also not too hard to resolve. I'm just going to select one of these pieces and make sure, by the way, that other collections are disabled because I'm about to do some select all stuff and that doesn't work if you can select objects that, you know, you don't want to select. So I'm going to select this piece, add a weld modifier. No, not weighted normal. Add a weld modifier right there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then I'm just going to select everything and also go to preferences, search for copy 
enable the copy attributes menu. Okay, now control C, copy, selected modifiers, weld. Okay, boom, now everything has a weld modifier. Everything's perfectly smooth as all things should be. So, um, and you've got all this going on, start at frame zero, which by the way, even if your scene doesn't start at zero, you still need to put your cursor at zero because the animation starts playing at zero, I believe. Maybe it's set up in the rigid body world. Yeah, oh no, one apparently, simulation start one. Okay, well, whatever, I started at zero and ended it. It doesn't really matter. So, um, excuse me, um, export. And now the funny thing is, if we turn on physics model, uh, I'm not seeing any physics model. Did I not click the collection into the thing? Ah, there you go. Good. Set that, export. Go to Half Life Model Viewer. Come on, work. There we go. So now each of these has physics, which is pretty cool, I think. Some of the physics have like this little red line. I don't know what it means, but well, because these happen to already all be convex hulls, they are perfectly usable as physics. So, you know, that's pretty good. So now this this thing, you know, players will actually be able to touch these these rubble blocks. They won't be able to like push them around or anything because they're not individual props, but they will be able to you know, walk into this. It's not it's 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 static collision, but it's animated. Um it can probably block bullets as well. Yeah, that's kind of the whole point, I guess, of collision. So that's pretty good. Um, the UVs on the inside are a bit whack, but <clears throat> I guess that's up to you to go fix. Uh, how do I pause? I guess I can go to sequence. So you'll see that the margins means that you can actually see the cracks. Um, but I don't, I'll, I'll have to look into if it's possible to maybe use different bodies visually than the ones you actually, because the margins are necessary without margins. It's, it's just the physics is going to explode and not work. Um, it's from a distance. You can't see them, but still. So, uh, what else matters? I'll show you how to bake the thing. So basically you select your armature, you go into pose mode and select every bone. Uh, you start at the first frame. I don't know if any of that's really necessary, but I like to do it. And then I go bake action. And I say, start at this frame and at that frame, one frame at a time, only select a bone, sure, whatever. I mean, I have all bones selected. Visual keying. That's necessary because that applies constraints, clear constraints. I would do that because otherwise, like if you're not going to clear the constraints, what's the point of baking the animation? And then I'm going to override current action and hopefully that will actually work. Uh, after baking curves, remove redundant keys. I don't think that's really necessary. I mean, source will have all the keys anyway, but sure, why not? And I want pose data. I don't care about object data and go. So there it is. That didn't take so long. So now all of these bones no longer have constraints. And well, that's interesting. This just has a bunch of nothing. And uh, the, the action is actually baked into the bones. You actually have to do this if you wanted to export. I think you have to do it. I'm not 100% sure. But if you wanted to export to, to FBX to like a game engine to an another game engine than source. But 
because of how source ops works you don't need to do it for uh, exporting the animation to source you can just leave the simulation live but it might be preferred to bake it because then you can go and clean up things that are bad like go in post mode and select this bone and say okay you know stop wiggling just go like when it lands here or whatever that's enough wiggling after that no more and then i just go deselect what's going on um Delete, and then just, I guess, just box select. Uh, delete. There. And now, it no longer wiggles. So that's one advantage of manually applying it. So you can just, like, make some adjustments by hand if, you know, if it matters. Don't spend too much effort, I guess, if, if you've got other things to do. What was the other thing I wanted to do? Oh yeah, uh, some more sequences. So I'll add two sequences. I'll call one before and one after. Um, so before we'll have custom range start at zero, end at zero. Just want a single frame and after will be 119 119 small downside is that it does have to export and i don't have to start at the first frame because the animation's baked now so it doesn't, doesn't need to simulate anything so let's see if i select before there's only a single frame. If I select full, what's kind of funny is full and before, look, they're like offset a little bit, but not in a way that necessarily makes sense. Still looking into that. And then after is on the floor over here. If I put full at the last frame, 119, and then over here, I select before and I go blend between them. You can see that. I select after and I go blend between them, then nothing changes. But if I select full and put it at the first frame and I select before and I blend between them, then it seems to move a little bit, but not like in a way that makes sense because if you move to literally the first frame, it's also different, right? It's not the same as the first frame. It's not the same as the second frame. So I don't know what frame it is. Why is it off? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, you know, whatever. Um, sim physics, very cool. You're welcome.